Hey DJs, DJ Joe Bonofsky here from JNS Entertainment. <clears throat> I just got uh, my lot of uh, Proco Siamese Twin. This is like the Run One or the Whirlwind. There's a couple of different companies that make it. I ordered 50 feet. I think I paid uh, less than a dollar a foot. So it's way, way, way less expensive to buy this cable yourself and make it on your own. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of cord in there. There is a shielded um, three-way uh, AC power with um, a ground and a uh, drain on the shield, which is an extra ground. And there is a pair of audio cable in there, a twisted pair. So I'm going to make my own. I've already cut this into two 25-foot lengths. Um, I've already stripped off exactly 12 inches of cable of the outer sheathing on this end and uh, I've coated the um, audio cable in quarter inch tech flex. I've already stripped and tinned, tinned the ends. I just put a little electrical tape on there to help me feed it through what I'm going to show you next which these are cable pants um, so this will fit on there and it gives it a little extra durability. I'm going to do this video in parts because it would be impossible for me to show this whole thing. What I'm going to do next is lay this out on the floor and coat the entire cable in uh, TechFlex. Um, and then I'll put a little heat shrink on the end. I'll bring it up to here. Then I will slide these cable pants on and I will heat shrink this end um, so that these are on there permanently as is the TechFlex. And I'm almost at the point where I'm going to start installing my XLR connector. So once that's done, then I'll strip off um, a small section of the AC cable, tie the ground and the shield drain together, tin those ends, and then I'll install uh, a PowerCon connector here. Um, and then once that end is done, I'll go ahead and I'll work on this end. So basically for the cost of, let's just say, let's just say it's 12 or $15 for this 25 length of cable. These cable pants you could buy on Amazon for, uh, I think I got a 10 pack for seven bucks. Um, XLR connectors, they're three and a half bucks a piece for the good ones. Power cons about the same. So three, six, call that a dollar. Um, double that, so now you're up to 12 plus another 15 or so for this cable. Um, so basically for 30 bucks or so, I am going to make my own uh, run one uh, power and audio to go from my main rig to my subs. So I'm going to cancel this video now and I'll start it uh, back up again after I finish the next step. And then maybe I'll show some soldering and connecting of the ends to these cables. And then obviously I'll show the finished result. While I'm here, uh, the tools I use, um, I've got a tiny pair of needle nose pliers and a teeny tiny pair of dykes, a bigger pair of dykes. Um, it's always good to have a blade. This is a rotary strip tool. It's actually pretty cool. Hard to see, but there's a tiny little blade in there. I don't know if you can see that. And you can adjust the depth of that blade, or the height rather, with that. And you just put this around the cable. You spin it around a few times and then you zip it to the end um, and it perfectly cuts the cable to the depth you need and makes it so this could just come right off. And it's always good to have a, um, a set of uh, a good sharp set of wire strippers that go down to uh, the, the, the thinner gauges. Um, most most um, XLR wire is uh, or most audio wire is 24 gauge so just so you don't cut through that. So I'll show the I'll show some more steps in a little bit. Also, you need a soldering iron to um, to tin the ends and to solder in the connections. And it's always good to have a heat gun. It does a much better job um, at uh, closing in the heat shrink than a cigarette lighter does. I do have a lighter um, in there, but um, basically I'm using three to one heat shrink tubing, um, so it shrinks to one third of its size. And it's got adhesive in it, so when it hardens, when it dries, it gets very hard. Um, and that, that adds as a little extra strain relief because that will be in there somewhere around there. So you'll have uh, a little bit of extra 
of the heat shrink sticking out of the back of the XLR, giving you a little more strain relief. This end is going to plug into my console, so I'm keeping both of these ends the same length at 12 inches. The other end is going to go into my sub uh, and top um, piece that I made. Um, so I'm probably going to keep the audio a little, maybe two or three inches longer on this end than the, uh, than the power, just because it's got a little bit farther to go. But before I cut that and do that, and I'm actually going to hook up my sub and get that, um, that lead going, um, that custom cable I made in my last video and, uh, and see exactly how long I need it. So I'm going to shut off this video for now and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, I'm at the next phase. I've coated the entire length of my 25-foot cable in TechFlex. Um, this is 3 quarter inch TechFlex. And I've got it right to where I want it at the end. I've slid a piece of heat shrink tubing over. And I'm just going to cover it right like that a little bit. And then I'll put the cable pants on. And then I'll slide another piece. And I'll do something like this um, to really lock the cable pants on that end. I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything on this end. I don't think I need to. Um, this power cable fits so snugly in here. This one's a little loose, but that's got TechFlex on it, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, so I'm going to set this up, and then uh, I'll be back. Okay, so I've just heated on the uh, shrink tubing. And if you can see, there's a little bit of glue coming out of the end. Uh, you don't want to do it too much, especially with the heat gun, because you could melt the tech flex real quick. So that's all good. I'm about to put the cable pants on, and then I will slide that over and melt that down to lock those in. All right, so I put the cable pants on, and I've seated them all the way down to the bottom. I could feel the edge of that cable there. You can sort of see where that heat shrink I put underneath is. I'm going to slide this over the whole thing and heat that up and that will uh, make this end completely solid and ready to start working on uh, those ends there. And uh, then uh, after I'm done with that, I'll start working on the other end of the cable. Okay, I've terminated this end with uh, my heat shrink tubing. Uh, I see the glue came out a little bit, so I know that's locked in there really good. I'm happy with the way this came out. Um, not too long. Once this shrink tubing uh, sets, it becomes very hard, so I don't ever like to do that any longer than I have to because it makes for a very stiff section. Um, I decided not to do anything on this cable because that is a completely perfectly tight fit um, and it's probably just not necessary. This There's a little bit of room in there, but I'm okay with that. Um, it's nice and flexible. It will allow me to, uh, to hook it up easily. I've already uh, slid my end cap and my, um, my locking piece down. I've taken the electrical tape off of the ends. I've already pre-tinned those, and I'm ready to solder on the XLR. Okay, so I've got my soldering station all set up and ready to go. And what I've done is, uh, in my vise, I just put a, a female XLR socket and clamped that down pretty good. Um, and then I just plugged in the male XLR into it to give it a good hold. Um, as you can see, the ends of my cable are already pre-tinned. I have not tinned the solder cups yet there. That is the next step. Um, and then I will move this in place and solder those into there. Uh, making a nice tight, uh, a nice good solder joint. Um, proper pinout is very, very important because if you have them right on one end and wrong on the other, you're going to get inverted phase um, in your system and your speakers will be out of phase and cancel each other out. So um, I always print out a cheat sheet. Um, I keep one handy. So in this case, I know the sheet is upside down, but I have it in the same orientation as my uh, solder connector. So in this case, pin one is shield, um, sometimes referred to as ground, but most often shield. Pin two, which is all the way to the right of the video screen, is your hot lead, or sometimes referred to positive. And pin three, which in this case is on top, um, this drawing is calling it negative. Uh, oftentimes it's called the cold or return lead. 
I wish I had a way, one of those camera holder things so I can um, add to the video uh, me actually soldering these in, but I don't have one of those holders, so uh, I'll be back in a minute. All right, I've added a little bit of solder to the cups. Let's see if I can get that in focus. Um, that is the next step. I've already got solder on the ends of my wires. Now I'm going to heat up each one of those cups, move this uh, wire into place, and finish that solder connection. Now I have finished um, the solder connection. And let's see if I can get that in focus. We have a good amount of solder in there. That's a nice tight joint. And on all three pins. Um, I've given a little stress test and it's really good. Now I'm going to uh, complete the um, assembly of this XLR connector and this one end will be good to go. Alright, this XLR end is now fully assembled. I like to leave just a I use a certain amount of shrink tubing so just a little piece is sticking out. It's very flexible and pliable. I do like the look of these uh, cable pants, uh, it just adds a little bit more of a finished look to it. Um, so now I'm done with the audio on this end. I think I may finish the other end in its entirety and then do the power cons uh, last. So I'll sign off for now and I'll get this set up to do the other end of the cable. Okay, so I've got one end of the cable. Um, with the audio completed and I've got the second end ready to go so my TechFlex is nice and snug the whole length of the cable I've already got a piece of heat shrink tubing here ready to go to slide over the uh, next pair of cable pants I'm gonna put on I've preset my audio line here I've got a little piece of TechFlex leans over I'm gonna push that back the rest of the way and then heat shrink tube that over to here. I'll slide my female connector um, parts onto here, strip that wire, and get ready to solder that end. And then the audio will be complete uh, with a male on one end and the female on the other. Um, and then the audio portion of this entire cable will be complete. And then I'll move on to the um, the electrical, which is going to be a little tricky because I don't know if you can see it right there, that little wire sticking up. That could be the most important part of this whole build because I'm not sure if the video can see it. I don't know if you see a little purple bluish hue around the inside of this jacket. That is the shield. There is a length of foil shield, the whole length of this cable, and that's what prevents the RF interference between the two. And that shield has something called a drain wire. That is the drain wire. So when you wire in the electrical on both ends of this, you need to tie in that drain wire with your green ground, and that will help diffuse any electrical... Um, radio frequency interference that this cable is trying to emit instead of infecting your audio cable which I was also quite impressed with the double shield on this cable it had both a um, it had both a copper braid and a foil um, so this is double shielded um, in addition to this being shielded so any RFI that's created through the outlet that goes through this cable um, it gets blocked by the foil shield and so long as you have that drain wire tied into your green ground um, when it's plugged in, all of that RFI will get dumped to earth ground instead of coming across to this cable. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to repeat the steps for this cable. I'm not going to take a video of it because I did a video of it when uh, I made this end. And then uh, in the next segment, I'll show you uh, me connecting the power cons to both ends. And then this cable will be complete. Um, in the end, I'll probably do um, a parts list um, and costs so that you guys can make, your, make up your own mind whether you want to make your own cables um, or whether that savings isn't significant enough and you'd rather just buy them. Um, me, I like making all my own cables because I use... Um, kind of the best parts I can find. Um, in addition, 
Um, you get to do some fancy stuff like cable pants. I've never seen anybody do that on one of these cables. So I um, hope you guys are enjoying this video, and uh, I'll be back when it's time to do the power cons. Okay, so just a quick status update. I just finished soldering this end of the cable, trying to get it in focus. Um, nice solid soldering joints. Uh, you can see that the foil shield here that I was talking about, the braided shield of course, is to uh, ground. And on this, uh, for this cable, it's reverse of the other one because you got male, female. So hot is uh, pin one, which is, or pin two rather, which is the uh, outside rather than closer to me. Um, shield is, um, shield is pin one. Hot is pin two, cold is pin three. So now I'm going to put this cable back together. Whenever you're making your own cables, you always have to remember to slide that boot on first um, before you do your solder connections. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself desoldering uh, that connection and uh, putting the boot on and doing it over. So we're ready to assemble this, and then the audio portion of this cable will be complete. Okay, so I just finished putting the female end on. Got a little bit of strain relief there. Tech Flex, got the cable pants. Heat shrinked on the, um, the cable pants to the outside edge. And we're coming along nicely. So this cable is just about done. Got to add on two power con connectors and then I'll have a complete cable, um, which is coated with this scuff resistant, slippery uh, Tech Flex. Should be easy to get gaff tape on and off of it without marking it up. Um, and it winds up pretty nicely, adds some firmness to the cable. Um, so we'll finish up this project and we'll publish this video. Okay, so I'm ready to put the power con end on. And of course you have to make sure that uh, you are familiar with uh, which end goes on which, blue versus white. So with the power cons, the blue is uh, power in. In other words, you're feeding power into the blue, and the white is power out. So on this end of this snake, the this is the male connector, so this is what's going to go into the input of the speakers. So I'm going to use the blue on this end to feed power into the speakers and you guys will see a little later on um, at the end of the video uh, what my intentions are how I intend to do this because you're probably saying well wait a minute speakers don't have power con connectors on them well some European ones do but mine don't um, but I'll, I'll show you that uh, at the end of the video you'll also notice that uh, these things come with two different uh, wire chucks a white one and a black one um, you can probably see the white one is, has a narrower opening than the black one. So this would be uh, four gauges of wire, uh, maybe as little as 14, but I use this one. I'm using 12 gauge um, or 10 gauge. Uh, no, I don't use 10 gauge with this. I'll use the bigger PowerCon 30s when I'm making 10 gauge cable, but um, definitely don't need that for this little cable. Use the white one. It's a, it's a, uh, a tighter fitting chuck and that will clamp down real tight when I put this locking nut down. Um, so I'm going to get that set up and I'll show you in just a moment. Okay, when I did my first strip, I just want to show you that foil shield that's in there. Um, I noticed the drain wire was not quite as long as the rest. Uh, must have been how this wire was cut. So I'm going to strip a little bit more off and here you can see that foil shield underneath the, ins the uh, rubber insulation of the cable. So now I'm just about ready to uh, strip the ends off of this and uh, start completing the cable. I did decide to uh, add a little piece of shrink tubing um, just because I overdo everything and I wanted to give um, give something a little more bite that uh, this uh, chuck will stick to. Of course I already slipped this boot on here because that's going to go up in the last step. Alright, so I've got my cable stripped. 
And you can see I've got that drain wire wrapped around the ground. And right now I'm heating up my soldering iron. I'm just going to tin those two together a little bit just to give a little better bond um, and make sure they don't come off. And then I will assemble this connector. Now I don't expect you to be able to see this on the video, but um, oh, you can right there, top, there's an N that stands for neutral. And over here you're going to see an L if I can, if I can get it right. Um, can barely see it. There's the N. There's the L. And the middle one, uh, you definitely can't see it under the shadow of that screw. That's a bolt. Uh, I mean, that's a uh, earth ground symbol. So, for those of you who have never wired anything AC, uh, in Europe, um, L um, stands for live or load. Um, and in the US, that would be our white wire. That is, I'm sorry, the black wire. Um, so it's sort of counterintuitive as to what you'd think. Uh, most people are familiar with DC circuits. Black, mean, black means ground. But in the AC current, black is your live wire, hence the L on the plug. And the white wire is your neutral or return. Um, and the green is always ground. So when you're putting this together, you absolutely have to make sure your black one is going in the L, the white one is going in the N, and the little picture of the ground is your green wire. Okay, so I've got the drain wire and the ground wire wrapped together and soldered together. So those are never coming apart. You'll also notice I tinned the tips of uh, the neutral and the, um, the neutral and the live wire. Uh, the reason I did that is because any of you who have ever put together these power cons, um, if you catch just the, if you don't catch the hole just right, your wire frays, and then you're pulling it out and retwisting it, and it's just easier just to put a little tin cap on it. That way, it'll go in nice. All right, so I've got all my connections made. They're in there really, really tight. Probably could have trimmed those back just a hair. I like to have the shielding right up to the uh, an inlet of the plug, but there's no exposed wire outside of the um, the shielding on the connector itself. So now it's time to line up my heat shrink, shrink that down, and put this plug together. Okay, this end of the cable is complete. Got my heat shrink there for just a little extra strain relief. This is power in, audio in, and this end of the cable is now complete. I'm just going to finish up the other end and then I'll show you how this gets hooked up. Okay, now this end is completed, or should I say, all the connections are completed. We've got the black going to the L and my earth ground and my um, shield drain connected together going to the ground and the white going to the end to the N neutral. Um, I put a little shrink tubing on there. I'm going to assemble this thing and then I will show you what's next. Okay, so now my cable is completely assembled. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you all the parts, exactly how much it costs, and if you were to buy one pre-made, how much that would cost. Um, so right now I'm going to take this over to the other side of my basement and show you how this interfaces with um, the cable I made in the last video. Alright, now it's going to get a little confusing. <clears throat> These two pieces plug right into my rig. This plugs into the audio out on the front of my controller case. This plugs into one of the power outs right on the front of my controller case. Then we have 25 feet of wire. And then when we get to where the speakers are going to be, this is my audio in. That is going to plug into the audio in in my subwoofer. The audio out of the subwoofer going up to the top is going to plug into this plug. 
power for my subwoofer is right here. Let me back up a little bit. So basically, we've got audio in in the sub. I've got a Nutric uh, Union there. This is going to plug into the back of the sub. I just don't feel like going in the garage and hooking all this up. This is going to be the audio out of the sub. This is that custom made snake I made in the last video. And when we come down here, I've got power in for one of my um, DJ lights that I mount on the stand, which is um, a uh, Spot Duo. This is power in into my QSC speaker. And this is audio in into my QS speaker. So it is completed. It doesn't look um, any less confusing right here hanging next to this lolly column, but when I get it connected uh, at my next gig, I'll shoot a quick video and you'll see how it worked out. All right, as you can see by this graphic on the screen, um, up top, these are the vendors that I bought all these parts from Redco, Amazon, and BH. Um, I spent a total of $142 to make a pair of these. Um, and if you look at the bottom, you can buy a pair of them for, uh, or one of them from B&H for $90, one similar to the one I made. You'll notice it doesn't have any of the fancy tech flex, um, it doesn't have power cons, and it doesn't have high-end um, plugs on the end of it. It's just got molded plugs. So in the middle of the spreadsheet, you'll see that if I was to make one exactly like the one from B&H, it would have cost me $98. Um, so basically, I saved uh, half um, because I made a pair for $98, uh, where it's $180 uh, to buy a pair of them from B&H. So basically, I saved 100%, or I say 50%, rather, uh, by making it myself, and I got to make it uh, highly customized to a level that um, you can't really buy that anywhere because it doesn't exist. I sort of made it up as I went along. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe uh, I tempted somebody to make your own cables along the way. Thanks for watching.